Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about what I think are the 10 best pet lizards that you can possibly have. And of course, I have all of these lizards, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but who better to tell you than someone with experience about these reptiles, you know? So before we get started, I ask that you please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon or by becoming a channel member. We would love to have you. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, hi there. <laughs> we have new merch, look. It's actually a logo this time. I haven't had a logo in probably ever, like a legit logo. Okay. This logo is actually made in collaboration with Love Skink Rescue, which as they sound are a rescue that take in skinks and educate about them online. I'm going to leave resources for them down below. Be sure to check them out. And I will be talking about Love Skink Rescue at a later date, but I just wanted to say thank you to Love Skink Rescue for this incredible design. Ah, that was my foot. So there's actually two designs, that's four, just kidding. There's actually two designs that you can choose from. One is the blue and hold on, let me go get it. And one is the green. Oh, I, this is a cropped hoodie. I do be a fan of cropped hoodies. So you can choose from the green design or the blue one that I was wearing previously. It's totally up to you. If you've ever wanted Just As Animal Friends merch, I think this is probably the one to go with because my actual name is on it. And also a little picture of a gecko. If you ever wanted to support the channel or have merch, I think that this is a great way to do so because you actually get something that says Just As Animal Friends on it. All my other merch doesn't have that. All my other merch is cool though. I still love my other merch. I will leave links for both the blue design and the green design down below. Now that that interruption is over, let's go ahead with the video. I first want to start by saying that this is in no particular order and these are just my opinions and I'm only going to be sharing reptiles that I've had experience with so don't expect to see like an iguana on this list because I've never kept an iguana and to be honest I wouldn't put them in the category of 10 best pet lizards anyway but again because I don't have experience with them you're not going to see them on this list. Peter's banded skinks are fantastic pet lizards because they are adorable, fun to watch, and they are a great size. They're not too small, they're not too big. They don't require an incredibly large or elaborate enclosure. They can be on the shyer side, and unfortunately most are wild caught, so I always recommend getting them from situations of adoption, rescue, or rehoming. If you're willing to wait for the right situation, and if you're willing to interact with them on their terms, they are truly lovely lizards. My favorite thing about Shukaku, my Peter's banded skink, is hearing the digging at night and seeing the cool tunnels made in the morning. I also love watching Shukaku eat. Their appetite is fantastic. They're not picky at all and they'll eat at every opportunity. It's also cool to have a lizard that burrows in sand instead of soil. It's neat to have an enclosure that looks singular from the rest. You'll notice that as I go down this list, I'll talk about their enclosures quite a bit because I think part of the fun of keeping reptiles is having enclosures that are like really enriching to the reptile and enriching for me to look at. Like I just love to see all my different types of enclosures. And what I love about Shukaku is that their enclosure looks so different from all the other enclosures that I have, which once you have as many reptiles as I do, their enclosures can tend to look similar, especially, you know, if you have one particular background building method. So next up we have my red-eyed crocodile skink. Red-eyed crocodile skinks were one of my dream species when I first started keeping reptiles, but like the Peter's banded skink, they can be hard to find for situations of rehoming. And also, you'll see a lot of them are wild caught, but they do have more captive bred ones available than the Peter's banded skink. They are one of the coolest looking reptiles in my opinion, and having an enclosure that has a water feature that my skink Fugaku uses often is so lovely. I love hearing the running water. I love the complexity of having a water section. Like I I was saying I love having enclosures that are different. If you want a reptile that is more hands-on or one that doesn't have high humidity needs, the red-eyed crocodile skink is not for you. But if you want a really unique looking small reptile that doesn't require a lot of space or interaction and you can build a really cool enclosure for them, this is the perfect species for you. What I love about Fugaku is how shy and secretive she is because it makes it extra special every time I get to see her or see her interacting with her enclosure. The other day I saw her biting water droplets coming from the waterfall in her stream area and it was so cool. I had to sit really still so I couldn't get a good like picture of it, but man, it was so cool. I love to see her climb her background and sit under the flow of water. Like she is just an absolute delight. Next up is a blue tongue skink. Blue tongue skinks are a large, unique looking lizard with big everything except legs. Big head, big bodies, but their legs are very little. 
and for that reason they're super goofy looking and I just think they're really endearing. They're a fairly interactive, relatively easy to find captive bred or for rehoming, rescue, and adoption. They do require a large enclosure, but it doesn't have to be incredibly elaborate. If you want it to be, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. If you want a moderately big lizard, they're a good choice due to their generally amiable temperament and relative ease of handling. They're also cool because they have varied diets and can be interactive when it comes to feeding, as you can see in these clips here. Haku was actually my ex's reptile, but eight months ago we split and now Haku is in my care full time. My favorite thing about them is getting to interact with them. I love the variety of foods I can offer to Haku and I love to watch them climb around their enclosure. I love to see the different burrows they make under their substrate. It's fun to see Haku pop up in different spots throughout the day or throughout the week. I also love that whenever I take Haku out for out time, whether it be outside or on the sofa, Haku always tries to find a place to cram their head. Like they just want to always be burrowed, and like I, just as you see in this clip, which I think is endearing. Next up is the fire skink. Fire skinks are beautiful, medium-sized lizards that are quick, agile, and great at climbing. They're such a joy to watch if you get to see them. They can be on the shyer side, but with patience, you'll be able to observe such cool behaviors. Fire skinks are available captive bred, but can be kind of hard to find depending on where you live, though in my opinion, they are well worth the wait. They don't need a super large enclosure, but I do recommend it to be a bit elaborate to encourage your skink to be out more. So make sure there's plenty of enrichment for them to climb and to hide. That way they feel safe and you can actually observe them interacting with their environment in a way that makes them feel secure. My favorite thing about Roku is their big personality. I didn't get to see it for a long time, but it was worth the wait. Roku is fast and sleek, gliding around the enclosure and scaling the background with ease. It's really impressive to watch. Roku also has a great appetite and is very fun to feed. Even as I edit this video, Roku was out in the middle of the day, sliding around her environment, crawling up the background, making a little ruckus here and there, and it's very fun. Now we are moving on to the Chinese cave gecko, which is another dream species of mine. Chinese cave geckos are small, really neat looking geckos that do not require large enclosures and their care in general is fairly easy. These geckos are a bit on the shyer side and they do like to climb, so I recommend lots of climbing enrichment and a tall enclosure as well as hiding opportunities if you really want to see the full range of their natural behaviors. They're also quite sensitive to heat, so if you don't want a reptile that requires high heat or any type of heating at all in general, this is a good species for you. Better yet, they are available captive bred and they're easy to find for adoption, rescue, and rehoming. My favorite thing about Nymeria, my Chinese cave gecko, is just getting to observe her. I love watching her climb the enclosure, especially when she climbs upside down across her screen top, which ever since moving her to my bedroom is something that I get to see her do a lot, but I haven't been able to catch it on camera like with decent quality, which is a real big bummer because I don't want to make any quick movements and scare her away, but she will literally just scale the walls and scale the top of her enclosure like across the screen for like a good 20 minutes when her lights first come on in the morning.
African fat-tailed geckos are also a small species of gecko with relatively easy care and they do not require large enclosures, but you can give them a large enclosure if you want to. Like Chinese cave geckos, they are readily available captive bred and can be found for rehoming, rescue, and adoption easily. They are super cute, interactive geckos with big eyes and adorable little smiles. They are relatively easy to handle, though not as easy as leopard geckos in my experience, but other people will tell you they're easier than Leo's, which means I guess you can just kind of look at it as a gecko by gecko basis. I have three African fat tail geckos named Oberyn, Obella, and Jamie. I love that they are great eaters. Oberyn is a special type of intelligent. He's probably my smartest gecko in the whole house. He's an excellent escaper. He has escaped three times from two different types of enclosures and two or three different types of lids. Like he's just like a genius, but he hasn't escaped in a long time, don't worry. He's also one of the few reptiles in my family to have drawn blood when he bit me. He's very good at that. He has a big personality. Obella is a lot sweeter than him and has a big appetite. Jamie is my smallest, my little wee boy with three feet instead of four. He's quick and little and he tolerates me as long as I have a worm or like a roach, which is all I can ask for. One last thing that I love about African fat tail geckos is that they kind of look like little aliens. Like, I don't know if anybody else sees that. I think it's their big dark eyes, but they kind of just look like aliens to me. And I, I really vibe with that. Also, I'm working on a longer video about the differences between African fat tail geckos and leopard geckos. So make sure that you are subscribed for when that video goes live, because it is definitely going to be like quite a longer video. Up next, we have bearded dragons. Bearded dragons are a medium to large size lizard. I guess it really just depends on your definition of large lizard, but they're, they're decently big as far as reptiles go, but they require big enclosures and have intermediate care requirements. Although those two things can be off-putting, especially for beginners, they are so worth the amount of money, research, and time that you'll put into them. These reptiles are interactive, easy to handle, fun to watch, easy to find captive bred or from situations of rescue, adoption, and rehoming, and best of all, they are stunning. If you're looking for an inexpensive reptile or one with beginner level care, again, I do not recommend them, but if you want to put the money, time, and research into keeping them, they will not disappoint. My bearded dragons are Franklin and Nova, and I've had Franklin since 2014, and when I tell you I love this dragon, I love this dragon. Both he and Nova have such different and equally great personalities. Franklin is a lot more chill, he's kind of dumb, he's just like a happy-go-lucky dude, whereas Nova, as you can see here, she got a lot of personality, she plans world domination on you know, her afternoon schedule. They're just two totally different lizards. I love watching them eat, climb, dig, bask, sleep. Like I just, I love them so much. I can't be a better like advocate for bearded dragons as long as, there's always that caveat, you're willing to put in the time, finances, space, energy, research, like you really have to put the work in for them because a lot of people get bearded dragons and don't know what they're doing. And unfortunately that leads to a lot of bearded dragons that need help. But if you have the time and energy, oh my gosh, are they worth it? Next up are crested geckos. Crested geckos are small, arboreal, and relatively easy to care for as far as reptiles are concerned. They're super goofy looking, soft to the touch, and they're ideal for people who don't want to deal with a lot of different types of insects. Crested geckos are fun to watch climb around their enclosure after dark. They are excellent at scaling various textures, and they jump super far. They aren't super fond of handling, but some tolerate it better than others. It's just going to depend on the gecko. They are readily available captive bred and for rescue, adoption, and rehoming. I have four crested geckos named Ri, Ru, Roshi, and Rayla. I've had Ri longer than any other reptile I currently have. I've had her since June 1st, 2014, and she turns 10 years old this September. 
Unfortunately, Re doesn't like me that much, but I still adore her on the off chance that I get to see her. I do get to see her every night when I spray her enclosure, but sometimes she is running away. <laughs> Roshi, Rayla, and Rue are more interactive. Roshi is wild and loves to jump and fly around his enclosure. He's very loud. I always hear him at night clanging around in there. Rayla and Rue like to eat insects from time to time on tongs, and that's fun to engage with. I love in general how goofy crested geckos look and act, and it's fun to see and hear them at night. And next up we have the Lichianus gecko. I don't think they're for beginners, but if you're looking for an absolutely striking big arboreal lizard that needs a big enclosure and can be like a statement piece of your room or your reptile room, depending on how many reptiles you have, if you want a reptile that's gonna vocalize at you and just you know look like an actual dinosaur this is a good lizard for you they are really expensive but they are readily available captive bred you can even sometimes find them for rehoming and adoption my lichianus gecko is named rin and i absolutely love her she is truly one of a kind like i can't think of any other reptile that i have that is like her in terms of her appearance, in terms of her behavior. She's just epic. And I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about Lichianus geckos who keep New Caledonian geckos. A lot of people prefer gargoyle geckos or they prefer chihuahuas or they prefer crested geckos. And I'm like, listen, I understand, but I am a lychee lover all the way. Like they are such cool lizards. I think for me, it's the fact that she looks so unique and at the same time looks so goofy. And yet I know that she's a creature that could most definitely make me pay for my curiosity. Like <laughs> she's got some danger to her. I love listening to her protests and watching her climb around her enclosure. This is actually her new enclosure. I haven't featured yet on the channel, but I will soon. She's been settling into it for a long time, but I will eventually put it out there. But she's just so neat. And if you're looking for a really unique lizard to be part of your collection, even though lychees are kind of more common now, I still really recommend them. And last but not least, you know I had to save them for the very last spot, leopard geckos. Leopard geckos are small, interactive, super cute, and easy to handle lizards with relatively easy care. They are readily available captive bred and can be found easily through rescue, adoption, and rehoming. They don't require as much space as a larger lizard, and yet if you want to, you can still provide a large enclosure, and if you do it right, they will utilize all the space. I have over 30 leopard geckos, and I've been keeping leopard geckos since 2015. I absolutely love having them. They have so much personality, and it varies from gecko to gecko. When you think about reptiles in general, well, for people outside the community especially, they don't think reptiles have much personality, but just imagine if you see one species of reptile, and they have a difference in personality from each individual gecko to gecko. Like, it, I'm telling you, they're so delightful. Watching them climb, dig, and hunt is an absolute treat, and they're super easy to handle and interact with. I saved them for last because leopard geckos are truly one of, if not the best pet lizards you can possibly have, and I know that that's like a basic opinion to have as far as reptile keeping goes, because for some reason in the reptile community, it's always like, what's the coolest, best, next thing? And it's like, I'm sorry, leopard geckos have been here for a long time, and there's a reason for it because they're amazing. They're like a nice staple to a reptile collection. Like if you haven't worked with a leopard gecko, you're missing out. And even if you're of the mindset that a leopard gecko is too common or too basic, there are different species of leopard gecko. On the screen right now is a Eublepharis angramenu, which is not the commonly kept Eublepharis macularius. So even if you think they're boring, you know, you can kind of get away with it a little bit by having a different species of leopard gecko. Like I'm just telling you right now, if you don't have a leopard gecko, you've never worked with one, I'm advocating, go out and get one. Of course, do your research and make sure you have everything right, but still, Go out and get one. They're incredible reptiles. Unless, of course, you end up with one like Fritz, who is perpetually grouchy, or Liana, who is perpetually trying to bite me. <laughs> Even so, they're both great. I'm only making jokes. I love them both. Don't come for me. But I'm just saying, there's definitely going to be some Leos that are better than others in terms of personality. But still, I recommend them wholeheartedly.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed listening to what I think are the 10 best pet lizards a person can have. Let me know what your favorites are down below. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the good stuff. Consider supporting us on Patreon or by becoming a channel member. We'd love to have you. With all that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. And a special thank you from Benjin, me, and all the rest of the animals here at Jessica's Animal Friends to our patrons and channel members.